Today I have Gavin Evans with me who has written what I imagine will be quite a controversial book, Black Brain or White Brain. As a white South African living in South Africa, I'm very aware of race tensions and how one approaches race. And yet you chose to write a book on the subject, to kind of hit it head on. Why? The reason is that there's been a revival of race science, which is race's science. Um, it, it seems to come in waves. I mean, there was a big wave in 1969 um, when a man called Arthur Jensen put out a paper in the uh, Harvard Educational Review that, based, that, that said that um, black people were inherently less intelligent than white people. Then the next wave came with the bell curve in uh, 1995, um, 1994, and the bell curve um, also drew from Arthur Jensen and was arguing the same kind of thing. So that the reason that there are uh, poor people are poor because they're unintelligent and the reason that there are more poor black people is because they, is because they have lower IQ and IQ is innate. The, the, the fact that there's correlation between poverty and IQ doesn't mean that IQ causes poverty. I think there's another way of looking at it and that is that poverty causes low IQ and I think there's no doubt about about that. What worried me about the latest wave, and it really started in about 2005 um, with a paper that's uh, by three um, University of Utah anthropologists, which claimed that Ashkenazi Jews were more innately more intelligent than everyone else. And then that was picked up on by a number of people who ran with it, most particularly Steven Pinker. So the result of that was that because Pinker's Jewish and because he's the doyen of evolutionary psychologists, People thought it was okay, so there wasn't any reaction um, to that. And that's taken, and then there were a number of other people who, you know, came out of the woodwork with similar kinds of claims, um, and also claims about Africans, sub-Saharan Africans being less intelligent and so on. So there was a, a spate of race science getting very little response. And the, the most recent, um, and perhaps the most insidious uh, expression of that was a book called a Troublesome Inheritance by a man called Nicholas Wade. And in his book, he says that Africans have evolved to be um, over-trusting, not too bright tribalists, that um, the Finns have evolved to be violent drunks, that the um, Chinese had evolved to be authoritarian, um, that the English had evolved um, to be enterprising. I mean, speaking to you now, I can hear in your voice the tone throughout your book, which is one of reined in anger and frustration of telling people stuff that you think that they, that they should have drawn those conclusions. When you take on this kind of thing, people say, oh, well, you're just, you're just being PC. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. It's just bad science. Um, it's bad science. It's bad politics as well. And that's kind of what, what makes, me, you know, makes me angry about it. It's because it's the kind of thing that we were hearing in apartheid South Africa from the education system, the Christian national education and so on. You are hugely derogatory of, or yes, right word, of, of the concept of IQ as a testing mechanism for intelligence. Intelligence, I think, is an amorphous concept. I mean, we have a number of different forms of intelligence. What IQ measures is your ability to cope with abstract logic. And I would prefer to see um, aptitude testing involving a whole range of aptitudes, so artistic, um, emotional, abstract, and so on, um, rather than, than having the single number for this general intelligence, which I don't believe exists. There does seem, in, in the reading of your book, to be a value attached to that rising IQ, so that there is, is greater value in having a higher IQ than having a lower IQ. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? At the time of the First World War, their IQs by today's standards would be about 70, which in the terminology at the time of the First World War would be moronic. Now, those people were no genetically different from, from what we are now. What that was different is that they were not exposed to the scientific way of viewing the world. So in terms of, of race in general, as a, as a term, yeah. I understand that that is something that is even poorly understood, where racial distinctions are something that humankind has created almost on a whim. All the, the kind of race science people will talk about a Negroid race, a Caucasian race, and a Mongoloid race. Now, those are not scientific distinctions at all. What they defined on is very superficial characteristics, and even if you, you, 
you, you start prodding those superficial characteristics, you find that they're not universal. So that, you know, um, among um, people who are Negro for African or origin, um, you get people with light skins like the sand people, you get um, people with dark skins like Nigerians, you get people with wide noses, narrow noses, and a range of different colors of hair. If you look at the Caucasians, um, you've got dark skinned Indians um, and sort of blue skinned Scots. Um, uh, you know, right throughout, I mean, uh, it, it, so, so even on the superficial characteristics, those races don't apply. But much more important is that, is that race in terms of genetics, the differences between um, the, the uh, races are, are minuscule and the differences within those race groups are huge. What is the difference between race science and science? Race science is not scientific. Um, or it's bad science. I mean, it's reaching wrong conclusions in a number of um, areas, both of, in terms of, uh, of genetics um, and in terms of uh, what IQ means. Psychology is not a science. Sociology is not a science. They're doing different things from what science does. So if we look at psychology, it's dealing with the mind. A mind doesn't exist without an environment. And environments are tricky things. They're not like measuring um, quarks or the double helix of DNA. So I have a more restricted uh, idea of what science is.